Hello there. This video is to show you the way that I play the tune The Gravel Walks. Um, this tune is in four parts and um, what I intend to do is go through each of the four sections and give you a, a description about how I play that particular section and then go through the tune again at a moderate pace so that you can play along and then finally go through the tune at a slightly faster pace so you may wish to practice along with that as well. Um, the tune itself is exciting. It's one of those tunes that when you hear it played in a session by two or three fiddle players, a banjo player, a couple of barands, whatever, guitars, it's an exciting tune for the, for the listener to listen to. So it's a great tune to learn. Um, the tune itself actually is played chiefly on the, on the A and the E string. Most of, the, um, most of the notes are on either A or E, um, those two strings. Occasionally you drop down to the D string, but most of the tune is held on the first two strings. And the bowing itself, um, there's a lot of this rocking kind of bowing going on. So I'll try and describe that to you when I go through each, break each section down and show you how I play that particular section. But first of all, I'll play the tune through at a, a reasonable speed, not too quickly. So you can take a listen and, and see what the whole thing sounds like in context. Okay. Okay, that's the tune itself played right the way through. Now each of the sections I'll go through and the musical notation is stored in a link which is below this video. So if you look at the video description you'll find that there are two links there. One is for the musical notation and one is for the tab if you prefer to read the music that way. So looking through um, each of the sections. The bowing in the first couple of measures is slightly different from the bowing in the next two measures and I'll, I'll explain what I mean. The first couple of measures in the first A section sound like this. So the first two measures, the bowing is long, short, 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 and then it follows with a long, short, 
short, short again. So. And then the third and fourth measures, the notes are played uh, where you generally play two notes with one bow. Here we go. So. So you t in those last two measures, you tend to be playing two notes with each individual bow stroke. So starting again and going through it twice, because I'll play the first four measures and then the next four measures, or bars. So it's quite interesting that the first two measures, first two bars, the bowing is quite different from the next two bars or measures. It's a sort of rocking motion. So that's quite interesting I think. Now when you go on to the B section of the tune it's also interesting in the same way that the first two bars measures are different from the second two in that the bowing changes. The first two measures or bow, bars start like this. You've got this sort of um, melody being held on the E, on the e string That's the melody, but in between that you're playing the open A. And then we do this business where we play two notes with one bow. Okay, so that's the first four bars. And just to repeat them again. And then carry on. So that's the second section. So just to reinforce that, I'm going to play the first section again and the second section and I'm going to carry on playing it quite slowly so you can hopefully play along with me. Three, four.
Okay, that's section A and B we've played through now, and now we're going to go on to section C, which is slightly different. Sounds like this. Okay, so we'll work through that starting from the first measure in section C. The first thing you will notice is that I'm actually not having to rock the bow now because most of the melody is held on the A string so I'm simply playing one bow stroke per note. So I'll start again section C Three, four. Repeat. Now, you end up with your first finger on the B of the A string, which is basically the first note on the A string in this particular scale. And it needs to stay on there, because when you go into the final section, the D section, there's this C, and it's a natural. That's the note. You're actually sitting on the B at the moment with your first finger, so you're going to just simply drop down, you leave your first finger on, leave that on the A string, and then you drop down with your middle finger onto the C natural, like that. And you also ensure that your middle finger is holding down the note on the E string as well. Okay, so you're putting a bar, almost like a bar, across the two strings. Now, I'm quite lucky, my finger ends are quite stubby, quite fat, so I can hold down two notes at once. But if you've got slender fingers, you're going to need to roll your finger across. You keep your, um, the, the tip of your middle finger on the C natural, but you would need to sort of flex your finger across to hit the, the note on the, the second note on the, on the E string. Which I think is a G, G natural, I think. Anyway, so... The reason being is that in this final section of the tune we go Okay, so what we're doing there Starting from the first measure, first bar. We're sort of um, playing the, the open, the, the natural C. And then we're going across to the E string. Back to the C. Then we're putting our th third finger down on the third note of the E string. And then we're lifting our third finger off, and the middle finger is still on the E string. So you get this sort of effect. And also, with your bowing, you're trying to sort of emphasise that up bow. In 
fact there it's a down bow but you're emphasizing that note Maybe it would be a good idea for me to go through that whole section again, D section, and just play it slowly so you can hear once again. And please join in if you if you wish. If you can do that, well done, because it's not easy holding down uh, one finger to play two notes at the same time, plus trying to figure out that bowing, rocking backwards and forwards, and, and keeping a reasonable pace with this tune. It's not easy, it takes quite a bit of practice, particularly when you go from the last note of the C section into the first note of the D section. And so on. So that the, that's obviously something worth practicing. Hopefully by now you've got some idea, idea of, of a way to approach this tune. I think you just need to think about the first couple of measures being a rocking sort of bowing motion. And then the first next two measures being this sort of um, one bow for each two notes. Because it then sort of gives... It sort of gives a nice alternative bowing. It, it makes the tune sound different. The first part is a dynamic part of the tune and then it relaxes as it goes into the, far, the next two bars. It kind of slows down a little bit. Well, it doesn't slow down, but it relaxes in, in, a, in its drive, in a way. And then it goes back to the frantic first couple of bars again and then the next two bars, it kind of just takes a breather. And then it jumps into the next section and it's all frantic again for the next two bars, etc. That seems to be the way this tune um, has been put together. And I think that's why it's so exciting to listen to because you've got this driving section at first and then it kind of just eases off a bit and then it drives again and then eases off. It, I hope that makes sense. That's how I see this tune anyway. Okay, I'm going to now play the whole tune from start to finish so that if you're learning this tune by ear perhaps uh, or just want to play along this this is a good time to 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 try it out I'll go as slowly as I possibly can and I will try and avoid putting um, too much ornamentation in but just keeping the, but the bare bones of the tune intact so you can hear how, how it's played. Okay, so I'll count this one in. One, two, three, four.
and that's the entire tune so I'm going to go through it again now at a slightly quicker pace not too quick mind one two three four <laughs> Slightly quicker again, one, two, three, four. Now, if you're feeling as though you've got this tune well underway, you might wish to look at a few embellishments. Now, grace notes. I think the grace notes sound quite good in the first couple of measures, certainly at the begin beginning of the tune. The ones I tend to put in are where I hammer down. I'm holding down the first note on the A string and I hammer down my ring finger on the third note of the A string and did you catch that slide? This tune has plenty of opportunities to introduce slides And then I introduce another little grace note there on the E string when I've got my middle finger on the second note of the E string and I hammer down my ring finger onto the third note, hammer it on and off. So in context. And when I come down there, I, I'm on that, my first finger is on the A string again, and I just this time hammer my middle finger onto the second note of the A string. I think grace notes are actually a, a preference. The, uh, what, whether you hammer on the third note or the second note, 
it's a preference of the fiddle player and and your own style so i'm just showing you the way that i would play this tune but of course you you everybody has their own way of playing grace notes you've only got to listen to fiddle players on the various youtube sites to hear that I'm just trying to show you the way that I approach it. So that first little bit again, three, four. And then of course the next part. And I put the grace note in there. On that run down, on the first note of the E string, I tend to do a quick hammer on and off with my middle finger onto the second note. Another, li another little slide there. And then I put one in there. When my middle finger was on the second note, I hammered the ring finger on and off the third note. And so on. So you can add grace notes in as and when. But I think it's more important initially to get the bowing sorted on a tune like this to get the rhythm correct. Playing it basically without anything fancy, just the bare bones tune. In essence, I think it's best to learn the tune, the basic melody, try and get the um, the bowing sorted, um, try and get the speed up a little bit, because trust me, when you hear this played in the session, it goes at lightning speed. Um, so that's quite important before worrying about ornamentation. Just playing the bare bones of the tune, getting the rhythm correct, getting the bowing sorted. I think that's the important thing. Fantastic tune, fantastic tune, no doubt about that. A one well worth learning to play, but it may take some time. But good luck, and I hope that this video helps you a little way along that route. Okay, thank you for watching. See you again soon. Bye-bye now.